Your Excellencies, my name is Oleksiy Maslow and today together with my co-agents here at Software Pro and Sanna Matyash, we appear on behalf of the respondent, the State of Revenge. I'll submit on the first two issues regarding the self determination of Agnaros and the creation of Eastern Nostica, while my co-agent here at Software Pro will submit on issue 7 d regarding the Marseille Convention and the removal of software. Uh, Sanna Matyash will stay in the off council for today. The respondent allocates 22 minutes for submissions on first two issues, 21 minutes for submissions on third and fourth issues, and reserves two minutes for third round. Madam President, may I please accord? Your Excellency, um, in its submission, the applicant alleged that the respondent breached the norm of the prohibition of threat of force by its actions aimed at the encouragement of the self-determination of the people of East Agnostic. The respondent claimed that there was no such breach in actions of the respondent. Moreover, the actions of the respondent were in line with its obligation under international law to promote the right to self-determination. The actions that were referred to by the applicant are the resolution of the parliament of the respondent and the deployment of troops to the border. Uh, these actions do not constitute a threat of force against the uh, territorial integrity of the applicant, as it is clear from the tax of the case. The resolution was adopted in response to the crisis, the humanitarian crisis in Eastern Mexico, and the deployment of troops was made. The crisis. Your Excellency, the crisis was the uh, violation of Eastern Gnostic's rights, namely the right to life, which was made during the uh, forceful dispersion of the uh, peaceful protests in Eastern Gnostic that took place. Excuse me, what right? Right to peaceful assembly and right to life. How was it violated? More than 60 people were killed during the protests. What's the legal test of this right? Excellency, under the right of peaceful assembly, the uh, people have the right, all individuals have the right to assemble peacefully and uh, manifest their rights. However, the demonstrations that were peaceful in nature were dispersed by the military police. Are there any conditions to the exercise of the right of peaceful assembly? Uh, yes, Your Excellency. Uh, the conditions are that they shall be exercised uh, in accordance with the uh, established rules and procedures and, and should not... To any, uh, to any provision according, concerning... Yes, uh, Your Excellency, the, uh, the right is established in the International Covenant on, International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights. Uh, and the other condition is that such right to peaceful assembly does not violate the uh, right of other individuals. However, neither of these circumstances was present... Only the other other individuals? Or groups of individuals, Your uh, it was the first criteria that was mentioned by the respondent. So you can restrict the freedom of assembly? Yes, Your Excellency. There may be some restrictions in, or, in order to secure other uh, rights and interests that are provided under international law. So, okay, how was it violated in our case? There was a riot and there was the police? Yes, and the uh, police dispersed the peaceful demonstration that did not violate the uh, public order or right of other people. Therefore, this was wrong. Yes, sir. What is the article of the ICCPR that regulates this? Uh, it's Article 6, Your Excellency. Your Excellency, turning to the movement of troops to the border, uh, it was made under the direct condition that these troops shall not leave the territory of the respondent. Moreover, this court should consider the... But is it typical international law that when the right to freedom of assembly is violated, then the neighboring state just takes and moves the troops to the border to secure you know, uh, their interest? Your Excellency, in I mean, you know, there is this problematic state neighboring uh, Ukraine. So I, 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 I've not heard that Estonia, Lithuania, and Latvia move the troops to secure the general interest of Russians because the Russian government regularly violates right to freedom of assembly. The example that, may be, uh, that this court may be referred to is the gathering of uh, Turkish troops on the border with Syria. Oh, uh, there was the right to assembly that was violated in Syria. 
uh, now you're going to say in Syria there was uh, clashes between the government of forces and uh, the uh, protesters, the military groups. Uh, however, the, what is similar in the present case in that... It seems to people that dead. Uh, no, you're going to see, in accordance with the last reports, more than 70,000 people were dead in uh, Syria. Uh, however, what is the similarity between two cases is that the movement of troops was made in order to secure the border and to ensure that the violence does not split from the territory yeah, of one country. The, the question is how reasonable another. was that step? Uh, this step like especially taking a picture, uh, my question is um, that um, let's see the whole picture, not assess this one decision of sending troops and, and making them stay there, but let's assess the whole, whole picture of it. You sent, there were um, disturbances, at some point you entered. So isn't it what actually applicant is saying, that it's not just one decision of the president or one, dis one, one resolution of the parliament, but the whole political situations should lead this court to believe that there was some undercover political reason. So how would you rebut these arguments? So this is, this is the, your Excellency, if compared to the situation that were referred to by the applicant, namely uh, the movement of the Iraqi troops to the border with Kuwait, which also was made in times of political tension between the two countries, the number of troops that were moved in case of Iraq was more than 50,000 troops. It is really a number of troops that may uh, pose a threat to the security of other states. So in there was the statement made also, right, that uh, the Iraqi troops did not attempt to cross. Yes, Your Excellency. How but does it matter how many, how, like numerically, how many members of military of one state crosses the border? Uh, Your Excellency, there is. It doesn't matter if they cross the border. However, in the current case, they do, uh, the troops did not cross the border. How? This why these facts matter. Uh, the 300 soldiers could not pose uh, a threat to the whole territory of the All right, other but state. If, if 300 soldiers cross the border, would that amount to use of force? If they uh, cross the border, would it yes. amount to use of force? Yes, you are. But like, suddenly it doesn't amount to threat of use of force. One if they, they yeah, move. No, you are. So when they are moved under direct order, that they will they protect the border from the violence in case this violence splits from the territory of that state. Moreover, Your Excellency, in the case, uh, in the judgment of this court, uh, in the Nicaragua case, uh, the threat of force that was claimed by the Nicaragua was in fact the maneuvers by the warships uh, on the border with territorial sea uh, of the Nicaragua, the uh, warships of the United States, and the combined uh, trainings of the uh, military forces of the United States and Honduras. Uh, these actions are clearly much more grave than the uh, movement of 300 soldiers to the is border. It, is it actually when a really well equipped, well trained soldiers are sent somewhere <laughs> in comparison to not regular militaries trained? Your Excellency, the. Oh, you, you, you don't seem to have a problem with actually a well trained soldiers deployed at the, at the border. Uh, Your Excellency, unfortunately, uh, the agent for responding doesn't have uh, any information about the level of training of the troops uh, that were moved to the border. How this is irrelevant, still but three hundred. Yeah, that's that my point. It's a regular yes. army. Yes, sir. So this was a regular and army. Nicaragua. Nicaragua. Yes. It was also uh, the warships that forms a part of the regular army that was on the border uh, with the territory of Sierra Nicaragua. But. Concerning Nicaragua, so that you're saying that the court did not find any violations in the case? No, Your Excellency, we are referring directly to the threat of force, not to other violations that were in place. In what about case. non-intervention? Uh, Your Excellency, in that case, the court found that the use of force against other threat uh, against other state amounts to the breach of the non-intervention rule. And uh, do you distinguish between the non? threat of force and non-intervention, these two prohibitions in international? Yes, Your Excellency, uh, the respondent distinguished between these two principles. However, the applicant referred only to the breach of the prohibition of threat of force. Are we limited by the applicant's submissions? Uh, no, Your Excellency. Right. So, what would your position succinctly if you want to talk to us in terms of the non-intervention? I think the argument goes a bit along the lines of your support for the 
may be characterized as an unlawful referendum and your support for their succession, if you will, and that that interferes with the non-interaction. What's your response? Your Excellency, under the Federal Relations Declaration, each state has a duty to promote the right to self-determination, and all the actions of the respondent were aimed at the promotion of the right of self-determination of people of East Agnostica. What about territorial integrity? According yes. to the same, the same declaration. Yes, Your Excellency. Uh, in accordance with the uh, Friendly Relations Declaration, there are certain conditions that shall be met in order to action to amount to the intervention into internal affairs. It shall be of certain magnitude of coerciveness uh, and shall be aimed at the subjudication of the will of the other state. Neither of these conditions were present uh, in this case. In but fact, you had you, you had your president and the parliament uh, speaking on matters of vital importance to Agnostica and its affairs. Yes, Your Excellency. However, it is not a rare uh, practice in the uh, state practice that uh, officials, including parliaments, uh, comment on the inter internal affairs of other the states. The spoken on the reports of statements of uh, state officials. Uh, yes, Your Excellency, it was in the case uh, of the nuclear, uh, nuclear tests. Uh, thereby, it was uh, in that case, the, by the expressions of the President, the obligation was uh, transferred to the state uh, to engage in the uh, um, certain international obligation was engaged by the uh, statements of the President. Yeah, and you just have to say that those statements of public officials, they don't in present case, there was no obligation that was uh, uh, aimed at taking by the statements of the president. Couldn't you argue that you interfered by and intervened inappropriately by sort of very untimely recognition of the state of the agnostic? Your Excellency, uh, no. In accordance with Article 6 of the Mandela Convention, to which both parties uh, are uh, parties. Yes, Your Excellency. Since what year? 1933, Your Excellency. Uh, the That's the year of its adoption. Yes, Your Excellency. Did, did it enter force in the force uh, The respondent may not answer to this question directly. However, it is in force uh, and currently applicable to both states. Uh, in accordance with Article 6 of this Convention, uh, the recognition is a political matter and primarily is the assessment by one state of the uh, political existence of other state. Uh, moreover, uh, there is nothing in international law that would prohibit uh, the recognition of uh, Eastern Gnostica. Well, uh, you're right, it's directly not prohibited, but the argument is if it doesn't meet the requirements of the Montevideo Convention, then by recognizing the state, despite the fact that the proper con uh, requirements are not met, you are essentially intervening and making a declaration and giving support to a secession of what is not a state according to international law. No, Your Excellency. Uh, firstly, the uh, respondent submitted that the respondent, on the time of the recognition, uh, considered the, uh, the East Agnostica to be a state. Uh, secondly, uh, more than I'm certain. Sorry to interrupt. Yes, you're right. That that's that's the issue. Yes. You have uh, you have recognized it, but if you did so in violation of international law, then that act in and of itself could be considered intervention, improper intervention. Uh, no, Your Excellency, because in the current case, the uh, respondent uh, is part as a party to the Montevideo Convention. is clearly has a full uh, political discretion either to recognize one state or another. I'm not aware of the instances where by states would promise to recognize a new state beforehand. It doesn't have any relevance to your own party. Uh, no, Your Excellency. Uh, however, in the present case, the... Not both? You are not aware of the instances and the present uh, it is relevant, however, in the present case, uh, the respondent is not aware of any instance. Uh, as, as for relevance to this case, Your Excellency, uh, the, uh, the respondent recognized... In you, the you, you, you did promise to recognize them. Yes, Your, Your Excellency. In advance, in advance of the actual whole health referendum, which brings me back to the question of if you, you did so without considering the four requirements of the Montevideo Convention, particularly, the one of the requirements is a clear um, territorial 
uh, the, the borders. You have to have clarity of the borders. And if you know that there is no clarity of the borders, then they're not likely to meet the requirements of the Montevideo Convention, but yet you still promise to recognize them in advance of that when you know that they're not meeting the requirements of the Montevideo Convention. Can that act be considered an, an unlawful intervention? The respondent uh, submitted that uh, the East Agnostic qualified all the criteria of the Montevideo Convention. Therefore, As of the, the date when the Parliament spoke on the readiness to recognize, it was the no, referendum had not even happened. Your Excellency, recognition was granted after the creation of East Agnostica. The promise of recognition was made before the creation of East Agnostica. Upon the creation of East Agnostica, it qualified the criteria so, of state. Okay. So how would the criterion of effective government be satisfied? Uh, in the Montevideo Convention, there is mention of government, uh, not an effective government. Moreover, uh, the uh, requirement of government does not uh, impose the obligation to have a uh, sophisticated system of executive and administ administrative body. In the present case, there was a coherent organ uh, that was uh, able to control the uh, territory. Uh, it was the Agnaros People Parliament. And uh, in fact, after the referendum, the clashes and the uh, violations of human rights stopped in the territory of East Agnostica. This once again showed that the uh, Agnostic and People Parliament had the control over the uh, territory. So your, your position is that the political promise, the promise of the political action doesn't have any legal power to disregard this? Your Excellency, there was uh, a notion of premature recognition of international law, namely in the 19th century and beginning of the 20th century. Uh, however, in the, uh, at the present level of the development of international law, there is no binding obligation uh, that would deny the so-called premature recognition. What gives you the authority to make the statement that the obligation has changed? Your Excellency, the respondent cannot refer to any case of claim of major recognition in the recent practice of uh, international relations. Your Excellency, turning now to the uh, second submission of the respondent, uh, the respondent submits firstly that the ignorance constituted people and were entitled to self determination. Excellency, there is no clear definition of people. However, there are a number of criteria, objective criteria, that uh, may be uh, assessed by this court in order to establish that ignorance are people. Uh, these criteria were reiterated in the uh, decision of the African Commission on Human Rights in Kevin Guamba versus Cameron case. Uh, these objective criteria are. The states in our case come from the African region. No, Your Excellency. However, these criteria were developed by the international group of experts. Uh, whose special mandate for uh, from UNESCO to assess the meaning of the term people. But this court ever applied the UNESCO documents in this uh, Your Excellency, um, the respondent is not aware of any case where such documents were applied. Uh, however, as this court may apply the judicial decisions as the means of interpretation of international law. Is it the judicial decision? Uh, the decision of the African Commission on Human Rights in which the uh, definition of people was upheld. Uh, so the objective criteria are the. Uh, it is sort of judicial body under the uh, African Con uh, Convention on Human and uh, People's Rights. Do they also have a court? Uh, yes, Your Excellency. Uh, so under the uh, this criteria, there are such criteria as the uh, ethnic identity, uh, at the common economic life, at the link to the territory, and common historic background. Uh, all these criteria were satisfied in the current case because in accordance with the uh, census uh, that was held in the territory of uh, East Agnostica, the Agnarevs uh, were determined in this uh, census as a separate group. Moreover, they had a close link to the territory. But that is they did enjoy certain uh, rights with an agnostic already. Yes, yes, Your Excellency, uh, because they were people and they were part they of the federation. They enjoyed internal self-determination, didn't they? Uh, certain autonomy was provided to Agnarevs under the uh, constitution of the Federal Republic of Agnostica. Uh, however, in the present case, uh, the respondent plead that in the international law, there is no direct 
prohibition of the secession. Uh, as this court held in the advisory opinion on Kosovo, there is nothing in international law that would prohibit the declaration of independence. Well, but also the Supreme Court of Canada held in the specific secession case, saying, stating that there has to be respect for territorial borders so that we don't have the slippery slope of whoever any country supporting any people who decide self-determination. And in fact, um, do you know what the Supreme Court of Canada held with respect to the question of Quebec? Uh, that the uh, Quebec was not, the people of Quebec were not entitled to self-determination due to the fact that they were granted internal self-determination. Correct. And, 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 and the court specifically outlined, that seems to be the only very clear sort of statement on this very specific issue. And the court stated that self-determination, albeit it was an important principle in the early 1900s, um, has really has to be balanced against the territorial integrity. And there are very specific circumstances under which self-determination can be involved. And I think it, it, it spoke about military occupation by colonial states. Are there any other examples that you think um, what kind of, which legal standard should we apply? Uh, Mr. Excellency, as for other examples, uh, there are examples of the state of Bangladesh or the state of Croatia that were created by the unilateral session without the consent but of the mother state. Can you legitimately compare the situations, the situation our case and Bangladesh? Uh, yes, Your Excellency, in both situations there were human rights violations, however, the scale of the human rights violations is different in the front institution. It is the claiming of the respondent that the people of uh, East Agnostica should not have waited till the aggravation of the violation of human rights. In fact, the parliament... And how many more people worldwide will not have to wait? Do you understand the consequences of the judgments in your favor? Should the court decide to adopt it? How it will affect uh, other states? Uh, Your Excellency, this court, uh, if this court decided that the Agnes were entitled to the nation, it will reaffirm that the, uh, all states are obliged to respect the human rights, and they, when these states do not uh, uh, meet these obligations, the people that are living in these states are entitled to uh, protect themselves. And including the way of the uh, secession and creation of a separate state. But I guess how many states will happen? Your Excellency, uh, the respondent has nothing against the new states that will join the international community. Uh, well, but that would. <laughs> Do you see the problem with that? <laughs> well, then it's come on, and every city is going to have a little. Yeah. Uh, may I have the additional uh, one more? Yes, you can. Uh, the main reason that these states uh, meet the criteria in the, the criteria of state, they're in fact states. I'm sorry, just a very quick question. What is, where is the threshold from, from, from your argumentation when the human rights violation amount to the level when uh, people, young know, people can have a right of, of a legal secession? Uh, Where, there, what is the threshold? There is no, uh, there is no, no, no clear... For you, for you, you are the lawyer, you represent the country. Tell me, what is the threshold? That the violations are grave and systematic, which was in this case. There were grave, the violation of the right to peaceful assembly and clashes with killing of more than 60 people, and the discrimination of the people of Eastern Nostica that, in accordance with paragraph 3 of the clarifications, lasted for uh, uh, more than several decades. Therefore, your Excellency, there was uh, the threshold was met in the current case. In any case, your Excellency, the respondent pleads that uh, this court, in entering, uh, in adjudicating this case, shall uh, take into account the expressed will of the population of East Agnostica. The referendum clearly indicated that the people of East Agnostica uh, do not want to continue their coexistence with the applicants in frames of the federal state. And the judgment of this court to the opposite uh, would uh, be in the in opposite to the expressed will of the population. What were the questions, what were the questions in the referendum? Uh, whether the uh, people of Eastern Mexico would like to secede uh, from the federal government. And who started the negotiations with the uh, Russia? There's no clear indication who started the negotiations. Interesting.